Howdy, it's Kyle with part three of the definitive ranking of the states, the most comprehensive ranking of the U.S. states you're going to find. This is the finale, the top 10 states, but also a post countdown analysis of some of the findings from the rankings. And if you're not sure what I'm doing here, this is the first one you're seeing. I'll leave a link to a video where I'm talking about the methodology and the categories being used. But I'm looking at 26 different categories that cover a wide range of things, economics, taxes, nature, all types of things to see where the states rank when you look at all these different factors. So this is the finale. These are the top 10, the best of the best, but only one can be number one. Who's it going to be? Okay, kicking off the top 10 is Virginia. Of the 26 categories, it comes in the top 10 five times and in the bottom 10 only once. Its single worst category is GDP growth rate where it ranks 46th. And that's very similar to where Maryland ranked in that at 49th because these two states have a lot of things going on with the federal government. So there isn't a lot of GDP growth with these two states. The only other categories where it's even in the bottom 15 is house cost and income tax. Its strongest categories are companies and professional degree percentage at 5th each, its 8th in violent crime, and 10th in household income and sales tax. And most of the rest of the categories, it ranks between 11th and 25th, so to get to 10th on this list, you're certainly going to be above average in most of the categories, and Virginia is, and it's number 10. Coming in at number 9 is Utah. It ranks in the top 10 for six categories and in the bottom 10 for two. Its worst category is 45th for housing cost. And I also have Provo ranked 44th as largest non-capital metro area. It also ranks low for companies in the state, violent crime, and agriculture. But it does quite well in many categories as well. It has the lowest cancer rate in the country, the second lowest poverty rate, it ranks 5th for scenery and parks, 7th for disasters and property tax, 10th for population growth. So Utah is another state that has really good quality of life indicators, but also really expensive houses. And all that sounds very similar to number eight, Washington. It shows up in the top 10 eight times and the bottom 10 five times. Its worst category is property crime, where it ranks last in the country and also 44th for violent crime. It's 47th in house costs, 47th in disasters, and 45th in sales tax but also does very well for many things, including being tied for first with zero income tax, the second best summer climate in the country, third highest GDP per capita, fifth longest life expectancy, sixth for scenery and parks, seventh for household income, ninth for poverty, and I have Seattle ranked seventh among cities. And there are nine other categories where Washington comes in in the top 20. So it's really bad in a few things, really good in a few things, and above average in almost everything else. At number seven is California. And as you might expect, it shows up in the top 10 and the bottom 10 many times, nine top 10s, seven bottom 10s. It ranks 50th for housing cost, percent with high school diploma and natural disasters. And it's also really high for income tax, sales tax, property crime, and low population growth. So those are seven in the bottom 10, but the next worst category, it ranks 28th. But being ranked this high, there are more positive than negatives. It ranks number one in agriculture, one in manufacturing, two for companies, two in life expectancy, three for winter climate, four for scenery and parks, four for GDP per capita, five for household income, six for cancer rate, and there are seven others that are within the top 20. But it isn't my biases that put California this high. I have Los Angeles at ranked 27th for its cities and Sacramento at 20th for state capitals. It's kind of like Washington, a handful of things are really bad, a handful of things are really good, and most of the rest is above average. Put all that together and California ends up at number seven. And yet it's bested by number six, little old New Hampshire. It shows up in the top 10 nine times and the bottom 10 only four times. Its worst category is agriculture where it ranks 48th, but it also ranks really low for energy, property tax, and winter climate. And it's just outside of the bottom 10 for companies and housing cost. However, New Hampshire is number one in four categories, which is more than any other state. It has the lowest poverty rate, the lowest violent crime, the lowest income tax, and the lowest sales tax in the country. And it also has the second lowest property crime. It ranks four in household income and high school diploma percentage. And it's top 10 for professional degree percentage and summer climate as well. That's a lot of great, not a lot of bad, but it is pretty expensive. At number five is Wisconsin. 
It shows up in the top 10 five times and the bottom 10 just twice. Its single worst categories are both winter climate and GDP growth rate, where it's 43rd in both although GDP per capita and professional degree percentage are also quite low as well. But where the state excels is I have Madison ranked second among state capitals, it's eighth in sales tax and property crime, ninth in high school diploma percentage, and 10th in manufacturing. And like most of the other states ranked this high, there's quite a few that's really good, just a little bit that's really bad, and the rest is above average. At number four is Colorado. I thought that Colorado had a really good chance of winning this thing. It does have 11 categories where it's in the top 10. That's the most of all states. And it's only in the bottom 10 for four categories. Its worst category is 49th for property crime, but it's also 48th in violent crime, 46th for house cost, and 42nd for natural disasters. Its best category is the third lowest poverty rate, but it also ranks in the top 10 for lowest cancer rate, summer climate, scenery and parks, professional degree percentage, energy, household income, life expectancy, and GDP per capita. So the things that Colorado are bad at, it's really bad, but again, 11 of the 26 categories, it's in the top 10. At number three is Massachusetts. It comes in with nine categories in the top 10 and only four in the bottom 10. Its worst category is 48 for housing cost, 46th for both agriculture and energy, and 45th for property tax. Although it does also rank in the bottom 15 for population growth rate and winter climate. But there's a lot of good stuff at the top. It has the highest high school diploma percentage, has the ninth highest professional degree percentage, second lowest violent crime, is second in GDP per capita and household income, third in life expectancy, property crime, and 10th in lowest cancer rate. Amongst the state capitals, I have Boston ranked third, and for most of the other categories, it's between 11th and 20th. So Massachusetts often ends up as number one on some of these state rankings, and here it does quite well also, number three. And that brings it down to the top two, Minnesota and Pennsylvania. One of them's expected to be ranked this high, the other one might be a bit of a surprise. But when you factor in all 26 categories, crunch out all the numbers, the state that comes out on top as number one is Minnesota. So I'll get to Minnesota in a second, but I want to talk about Pennsylvania first, number two. I'll be honest, when I crunched the numbers for all this and Pennsylvania was two, I did kind of the arrested development thing like, her? And Pennsylvania's path to number two on this list is a little under the radar. It only shows up in the top 10 five times, which is tied for the lowest amongst all the states in the top 10. And it's also in the bottom 10 for three categories. That doesn't sound very impressive. How is Pennsylvania second amongst all the states? Essentially what it is, is that those three bottom 10s are the only three that they have in the bottom 20. Its worst category is 43rd for population growth and also ranks 41st for GDP growth. And I have Harrisburg ranked 41st amongst the capitals. The only other below average categories are cancer rate at 29th, life expectancy at 28th, and winter climate at 28th. At the top, it's ranked second in energy production, seventh in companies and manufacturing, and ninth in professional degree percentage. The category where it did the best is I have Pittsburgh ranked number one amongst the second largest metros that's not the capital. But as we saw earlier with some of my other biases, just simply having a city ranked really high isn't going to put them over the top. It's just that Pennsylvania is low-key above average in just about everything. And that brings us to number one, and that's Minnesota. And it has a fairly similar line to Pennsylvania with six top 10 categories and two in the bottom 10. Its worst categories are 48th for income tax and 44th for winter climate. The only other category for Minnesota is below 30 is sales tax at 34 and property tax at 32. You look at its top categories, it ranks fourth for life expectancy, fifth for poverty rate in agriculture, and sixth for high school diploma percentage. But where Minnesota did exceptionally well is where I had it ranked in its cities. I have Rochester ranked second in its category, Duluth fifth in its category, and St. Paul 11th among state capitals. So my bias on these cities in Minnesota certainly helps put them up there, but at the same time, I think that's a really important part of a state, and Rochester, Duluth, and St. Paul are all pretty nice places. So with six categories in the top 10, nine others in the top 20, and only two in the bottom 10, Minnesota ends up number one overall on this list of the rankings of the states. 
With Minnesota winning, that really isn't a huge surprise. I expected it to be in the top five. If you've been with the channel for more than a couple of years, you might remember Geography March Madness back in 2021. This is where I compared the states, something similar to this, but I was just choosing categories at random from a bowl. And also many of the categories were state flag or your state capitol building. Those types of things aren't really important in the grand scheme of things, just kind of fun to compare. But even though Minnesota won that tournament, it doesn't necessarily translate to winning this one. So after looking at all of the rankings, I wanted to do a little bit of an analysis of the findings. So starting with the beginning of the countdown, you see that most of the states ranked at the bottom are in the south. And that includes the bottom five states, Mississippi, Louisiana, Arkansas, Alabama, and Oklahoma, all being one contiguous blob. The states at the bottom all had many things in common, really bad educational and health statistics, low wages, high poverty, a lot of natural disasters. So with five of the bottom 10 definitely being Southern states and two others, Oklahoma and West Virginia, often being considered Southern, you can say that seven of the bottom 10 are in the South. But after a large cluster of southern states in the bottom 10, you don't see a large amount of geographical correlation with the rest of the countdown. So I want to look at why almost all of the Midwestern states outperformed almost all of the southern states. It comes down to, by and large, the Midwestern states as a whole have better health and education statistics, higher wages, lower poverty, more agriculture and manufacturing. The Midwestern and southern winter and summer climate stats are basically reversed. One thing that was important for these rankings for me was to make sure my personal bias categories weren't the ones that really decided the whole thing. And with ones like winter and summer climate, those are subjective, but not really that subjective. But I also wanted to make sure that there were enough categories to where that any one, whether it be objective or subjective, wouldn't be enough to change the entire rankings too much. But I also didn't want there to be too many categories to where many of them were then diluted. But it's also really important to note this is not a countdown of the best places to live. Everyone's personal preferences are going to be different. Everyone's most important categories or most important things to consider are going to be different. But yeah, Minnesota once again coming out on top on a competition on this channel. But mark my words, Minnesota, one of these days I will find your kryptonite. So there you have it, the definitive ranking of the U.S. states. I hope you enjoyed this video and the series in general. If you did, please give me a thumbs up to let me know you approve. And subscribe to this channel if you're interested in learning more about geography from a nerd. But yeah, thanks for watching. Geography King, signing out.